What's happening with the MBN and what is fiber to the distribution point? Welcome to Vertical Hull, the tech show where we channel surf through the headlines in the search of the big picture. I'm Adam Turner, and this week I'm not here with Alex Kidman. Instead, I'm here with Supertum Adhikari, who's the technology editor of The Australian. Supertum, welcome to the show. Great to be here, Adam. So we've spent the day in Queensland looking at the various MBN rollouts. It's been a big week in the MBN. The big announcement today was about the fibre to the distribution point. Well, what do we think about that? Well, you're right, Adam. It was a very big week uh, for the NBN, and it all kick-started with a very, very, with a very furious exchanges between Bill Morrow and uh, yes. Stephen Conroy at the Senate Estimates Committee. Always entertaining, uh, and I think uh, the the ball really started, you know, moving there with regards to fiber to the distribution point. Now, as Bill Morrow pointed out during this uh, media tour or the road trip, as you would uh, today. Fiber to the distribution point now is very much a part of the essential toolkit that NBN Co. wants to use. That doesn't mean that this is a technology that's now going to become the default in any sense of the word. It's still definitely very early days. But I do sense that there is um, this gives NBN Co. a certain amount of wiggle room again with regards to perhaps you know, tackling some of the criticism that it's been getting that it's too tied up to copper. Yeah. So in a nutshell, fibre to the distribution point falls somewhere between fibre to the node and fibre to the premises, yeah. but it's actually closer to fibre to the premises. It basically, it's fibre to the footpath. It and really then you is. just use it, your phone it, line it really for that is. last I think in the simplest term, what it is, is yeah. this is essentially driving that bit of fibre, you know, as close as you can to the premise. Yeah. And doing it in a cost-effective way, really, yeah. you know, so you require less building, you know, less works, and uh, most importantly, it now cuts back that reliance on that last mile copper. I mean, copper is still important in this aspect, yeah. But this does it's last meters rather than last, last mile. Last mile, and, yeah. and, and and what's really important here is that this now gives NBN Co. a very viable path to not only now connect a number of premises, which could have ended up with maybe substandard FTTN mm. and also but also provide a great upgrade pathway. Now that's something Bill Moore is very 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 adamant and he's very uh, and he always makes it a point to say that NBN Co's mandate is to provide an upgrade pathway and this really fits into that idea yeah. of that there is an upgrade pathway. But at the moment they're in no way pushing this as a substitute for fibre to the node or, or when I mean a substitute, they're not going to make this their preferred option, right? People who think that fibre to the node is well, going to disappear in favour of this, it's not going to happen, is it's it? It's not going to happen This is to, to fix those patches where fibre to the node or fibre to the premises don't make sense. This I, is the I, Yeah, look, you know, I think one of the things Bill Morrow made very clear earlier this week when he was in his exchanges with Stephen Conroy was that NBN Co. will do nothing out of its volition other than just test and trial these yeah. technologies, because you know, yes, um, the the you know the basic uh, concept that's being put out now that look this is viable, the cost of using and deploying this is starting to come down, which is all well and good, but it still doesn't meet the criteria that the government and the NBN Co board has set down, which is to do it faster and cheaper, whatever yeah. that means. But having said that. There's nothing stopping Malcolm Turnbull from announcing the election and then after that, either after winning an election potentially or prior to go getting into an election, yeah. saying that NBN Co. will make fiber to the distribution point. At post-2017, fiber to the distribution point becomes the default rollout yeah. methodology. That, that, that's a big change. That's a, because, well, fiber to the node, you can connect three, 400 people to a node. Fiber to the distribution point is basically the pit in the street. They're talking about having a two-way or a four-way splitter in there. So it is a big change to the design of the, the It is, the it is. And, I think and that, the way you hook people up. And I think that's what NBN Co. is saying at the moment, yeah. that it's far too early to hedge your bets. And They're saying say maybe 300,000 premises. And yeah, it would so just be... they pick those ones we'll say in a regional area where it's too hard to run power out there to a node Pre fiber to the premises doesn't make sense this is because the thing about fiber to the distribution point is it can actually take its power from the house that it's supplying that's right which is that's why it's right. got to be nice and close that's but so right. then you don't have to spend a lot of money getting power out to that's this right thing. yeah that's right 
And and look, I think best case scenario post 2017, maybe fiber to the distribution point can be the technology that weeds out some of those really really horrible FTTN areas. Yeah. You know, and areas that would have been consigned quite clearly to a substandard service. Yeah. And I think there's a there's a good chance, or at least. Um, the language coming from NBN Co today seem to indicate that they are very committed to using this technology, mm. at least from that perspective. Yeah. But is it going to be default? I, I mean, at the end of the day, as Bill Morrow said, that uh, NBN Co can do nothing out of its own volition. It has yeah. to take directives and follow orders from its lord and master, which I guess for all the intents and purposes is Malcolm Turner. Yeah. So we also heard a bit about HFC. They are about to turn on their first HFC area in Queensland. But the, the language they've been using about HFC has changed a little bit. When they first floated the HFC network, the idea was that if you're in the HFC footprint, which means if it went down your street or was in your suburb in the next street, you would definitely be hooked up to HFC. They're not talking like that anymore. They're, they're, it still might be cases where even if HFC is in your suburb and not far away, they might decide to put you on something else. This is not necessarily what people thought they were going to get, is it? No, I think there was some confusion about that. You know, I think NBN Co. made it clear a little while ago that uh, there will be some pockets of areas where, you know, the HFC would not be either fit for purpose or essentially these are some of these areas where neither the Telstra nor the Optus footprint actually has gone the full way. Yeah. So essentially you're ending up with a street that maybe 10 years ago or 15, you know, what had very few premises. And when Optus or the Telstra crews came around, they said, oh, there's only two houses. There's no point running all, doing all the hard work there. Yeah. But since then, there's now far more premises there. So I think there was an assumption that the HFC would be extended to all these areas. Well, was it just, just an assumption? This strategic review pretty much said that would be the way. And Turnbull even criticized people who said, hey, some of these houses might end up on DSL. He pointed out, no, it is HFC for all of them. So it was more than just an assumption. We were pretty much told that's the way it was going to be, but it's well, not the way Well, you know, it's I think be. one of the things we know since Malcolm Turnbull came on board and, and you know, as the communications minister, mm. even before his ascension to power, was that this whole technology agnostic mantra that's been pushed very hard by Malcolm Turnbull and NBN Co. has really always been about providing this sort of flexibility and, as I said earlier, some wriggle room. So I'm sure that if you mentioned it to... Malcolm Turnbull or to NBNCO as, as uh, some of us did today, uh, the answer you're going to get is that at the time of the strategic review coming out, there were certain assumptions in place made by NBNCO, made by its consultants, and obviously as they hit the ground, those, some of those assumptions don't match. And I think that's what NBNCO is trying to do by saying that instead of guaranteeing any service, there could potentially be cases. Now, you know, in some cases, uh, by their own volition or by their own admission, it could be FTTN, Mm. but it could also be FTTP. I mean, there might be a scenario where it's actually more cost-effective to run the full fiber straight into the premise or into the MDU. So I think what we might see a lot of these infill areas be we could end up with a lot of fiber to the basement. Mm. You know, yeah, a that strong, was the big one they were saying. Yeah, there's a strong possibility we're going to see that. For, for large premises, uh, like multi-unit places with mm. 100, place, uh, 100 dwellings or whatever, that will be the option to go. And that kind of seems to make sense. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, what's really important for us to understand is that NBN Co. needs to connect as many premises as it can simply because it needs to start generating some income. Yeah. It needs to start generating a revenue. Now, it is on an upward trend, which is to be expected, but it's nowhere near fast enough to what, where we really should be at this point. Yeah. So there is a huge deal of pressure on, on Bill Morrow and, and his team to make sure that homes get connected. Now, you can always argue that does that kind of haste um, lead to a potential for shoddy work or for careless work? But I think a lot of the intent today from NBN Co. in this field trip was to perhaps allay some of those concerns. Yeah. That, look, we've got a dedicated technical team that's doing the best it can, and they're very genuine in what they want to do. But then again, I guess we'll have to wait and see how it <laughs> all pans out, really. Well, I reckon that's a pretty good snapshot of what happened in the NBN this week. 
Superdom, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you like what you hear, hit that subscribe button.